Hello and welcome. In this lecture, I want to work through a specific uh, exhaustive, not exhausting, but exhaustive, comprehensive example of the map translation. And I want, now keep in mind, the map translation is designed to minimize the number of tables possible, which means wherever we can, wherever we can combine well, no, for a second, let's think back to the rules that are always, always the case. Every entity is going to get a table no matter what. So when it comes to minimizing the number of tables, what we're dealing with is relationships. So wherever we can, we're going to combine relationships with an entity. Okay, so this is the essence of the mapped translation. And I want to start us off with a review of something that we talked about in terms of the inviolate rules no matter which translation mechanism you are talking about. Okay, so we have, bear with me, okay, so we have two entities participating in a relationship, entity X and entity Y, doesn't really matter what they are, entity X has a primary key of X number, entity Y has a primary key of Y number, and we will call the relationship, just because we don't know the, you know, because this is abstract, we'll call the relationship X, Y. Okay. Now, we saw in the last lecture that if the cardinality here is many to many, then the only option is for the X, Y relationship to get its own table. Why? Because if we were to pull it over here, the primary key of the table would be Y number. Y number does not uniquely identify an instance of the XY relationship. Why? Because for any given instance of Y, say a Y of three, there could be four or five or 20, we don't know, different instances of X number. And guess what? If you have 20 instances of three, three is not unique. You violated the rules for the primary key and you cannot have that. So we know that we cannot combine the XY relationship with Y. For the same exact reason, we know that we can't combine it with X either. For any given instance of X, there's going to be multiple instances of Y, which means that if we try to put XY over here with X, we would have the same X number repeatedly if we have multiple X numbers that are the same, we have ruined the ability of X number to be the primary key and we are out of luck. So that is the case with a many to many. And it's every bit as much a case when we're doing the math translation as any other time. That remains to be exactly the case. However, let's take a look at something like this, one to many. How about, in fact, we have a more concrete example. I think a concrete example might be easier to wrap our brains around. I know it is oftentimes for me, and I hope it is for you as well. Okay, so we have a department and employees. That's always a pretty, pretty easy to understand example. And the employee has an SSN number as their identifying primary key and the department has a department number as its identifying primary key. We're indicating that by the underline. And a department, uh, let's say employees, it's kind of dumb, but that's fine. So a given instance of a department employs multiple employees. A given instance of an employee can be employed by at most one department. So we don't have anybody working for multiple departments. Pretty common situation, we've seen this before. All right, so let's talk about the relationship. The relationship needs to include, pretty much by, you know, by definition, as the nature of the relationship, the department number and the SSN. So you can imagine, we need to establish, we need to keep the linkage between these two things. That is the job that the employees table, if indeed we have a table, does. But the question is, since we're doing map translation, we want to minimize tables. So the question we ask is, can we combine this relationship with one or the other or either of the entities involved? And first thing we'd say is, okay, can we put this 
in with department. Department has as its primary key the department number. So what we're asking is, can we uniquely identify an instance of the employee's information, which is the department number and social security number, by the department number alone? And the answer is no, we cannot. Why? Because let's say that the um, accounting department is department 17. Well, department 17 has a bunch of people working in it. And department 17 has Joe, who's 222-22-2222, and so on. So as soon as 17, which is supposed to be the primary key, the department number, shows up twice, uh, we violated the rules for primary key. We cannot combine the information we need to keep in the employees table, which provides the link between department number and social security number. We cannot put it here. No way. Not going to work. Try it again. So that's not going to happen. However, however, let's take a look at the end side entity, employer. So we want to combine this information for employee. We say, okay, well, you know, we have a, so what we're asking is, will social security number uniquely identify every instance of the information in the employee's relationship table from every other? Here the answer is actually yes, because we know, we know for every instance of the social security number, how many instances of the department number are there going to be? Just one, just one. So over here, you know, whatever the, whatever the social security number is, 22-2222, that's Joe. How many departments can he work for? He works for 17, we just mentioned that's accounting. Can he ever work for another one beyond 17? No, this is it. So will the number 22222222 ever show up more than once? It doesn't need to, it won't ever happen, that's impossible because for any given social security number employee, they'll only ever work for one department. So does this information alone succeed in uniquely identifying an instance of the information contained in the employee's relationship table? Yes, it does, yes it does. And here we've got a match. We can combine, and we'll represent that by drawing a line around the relationship. We can combine the relationship together with the end side entity in a one to many relationship. That's fantastic. We've cut down on the number of tables that we have. So, let's get rid of this. I hope you're following along. I know once it all gets drawn out, it looks a little difficult to follow. So here's the rule, if you want the rule. I'd rather you be able to think through in terms of primary keys, but the rule is in, in mapped one to n relationships get mapped to the n, n side entity. Okay. Could we do it to the one side? No, we cannot. And that is not possible. Don't, don't do it. Don't think of it. Cannot happen. Why can we not do that? Make a great test question. Of course, we don't have a final in the class, so I don't expect you to sweat it too, too much. But if you're really concerned about understanding this stuff, be sure you can answer the question, why can't we do that on the one side? And we just talked about it here in the lecture, so I hope if you were to go back and review that, you could. 